On Main Street, Americans are struggling. COVID-19 has forced businesses to shut their doors, travel has been put on hold, and consumers have cut down their spending. But on Wall Street, stocks are rallying. So how have financial markets become so disconnected with the realities on the ground? Here's why Wall Street and Main Street have diverged. Coronavirus fears wiped out all of this year's stock market gains. Wall Street ending one of the worst weeks of trading since the financial crisis in 2008. In mid-February, COVID-19 began spreading to more countries. And as the number of cases rose, the stock market plummeted. This recession essentially came out of nowhere um, because it wasn't a financial crisis that is leading to it. It was a global health pandemic. But by the end of March, the downward trend on Wall Street reversed, and stock market values bounced back, returning to similar levels it had been a year ago, when the unemployment rate was less than 4%. The official unemployment rate reached 14.7% by the end of April. This is one of the best weeks in the stock market, so uh, I think there's a tremendous feeling of optimism in this country. You've probably heard this before, but the stock market is not the economy. The Dow Jones Industrial Average, for example, has only 30 of the biggest companies in the U.S. The S&P 500 has, well, you guessed it, 500 companies. Absent from these carefully curated lists are the 30 million small businesses with fewer than 500 employees. Most people assume stock prices are closely linked to profits and profits only. But that's not really what's going on. Jay Zagorski says the recent stock market recovery can be explained by two other factors. So when a disaster hits this country like COVID-19, the Federal Reserve, the central bank of this country, lowered interest rates. And that boosted stocks. Lower interest rates make borrowing money cheaper. So big businesses tend to increase spending and investors can take more risks. But right now, I think what a lot of financial traders are looking at is the demise of competition. As the COVID-19 shutdown expands, more and more companies are at risk of bankruptcy. Let me give you a quick example. There's really three big cruise ships lines. There's Carnival, Royal Caribbean, and Norwegian. Norwegian cruise ships said that they are at risk for going bankrupt. If you take one of the three big players out of the market, that means there's less competition for the other two. And once people decide to go back to cruise ships, there's less price competition. That'll boost their future profits. This example highlights another important thing to remember about the stock market. It focuses on the future. If investors believe the worst parts of the pandemic are in the past, that means there's nowhere to go but up. But the country's economic health depends on more than stocks. Things like GDP, consumer spending, housing values, and employment. The labor market is a more important indicator to measure because that looks at how much people are able to work, whether or not people are getting the hours that they need, what their pay is. That is really how people make ends meet in the economy. The Bureau of Labor Statistics stated that of the 20 million newly unemployed, 18 million were on temporary layoff. So the big question is, will all these people return to work? And as states ease quarantine measures and businesses reopen, is it safe to say that the worst is behind us? It is possible that it will rebound faster than the Great Recession, um, but we don't know when the rebound will happen because we don't know <laughs> when this is going to be over because um, essentially we're waiting on a vaccine, right? Um, and that takes, that takes time. 